Hi and welcome to Saltash Maths Tutor, you'll see I've changed the picky and the aim of uh, this little um, short video lecture is to go through some actual examples of vectors and the first ones will be foundation based but they're useful for anybody, gives you an idea about that vector notation so here we go. Okay so here's the first question and this is at foundation level and it's to translate the rectangle R by the vector and the vector that they've got here is plus 6 and minus 2 okay I've got my able assistant here today and she is going to have a go at <laughs> translating it across okay so what are your thoughts well I'm not really sure plus 6 yeah that goes along then yeah minus 2 is there so that goes down to yeah. Okay. Well, the or thing, yeah. two minus two. Well, the first thing with any shape is that the confusing bit can be the idea of moving the whole shape, and the thing to mm. do is to actually just pick a point. And I'm just going to be any point. Any point you like, and then you make the translation to that. So does that help? Yeah. So what are you going to do first? Move it plus six. So okay. <clears throat> so one, two, mm, three, that's it. four. Five and six, and then what? Down two to D minus two. Well, it's down. It's just down two because it's like an instruction manual. Right, okay. okay, so it's down one. So that's minus one and minus two. So there's a there is a really good point being brought out, and the point is that it's not referring to on here the actual x coordinate and the actual y coordinate it's like an instruction manual it's saying that wherever you start and that I just, could be anywhere yeah I'll just let me put a point up there and it says go plus six so I'd go one two three four five six because that's plus six and I'm moving along the x-axis and then I in this particular case move down the y-axis because it tells me to go one two down Okay, so it doesn't matter where you start, whichever pick you point you pick, it's just that movement. And so what that means is that, and what I'll do is let me just put a a cr cross to where we ended up with our final point, and then just let me have a tiny bit of a tidy up, and then hopefully by the magic of this, what it means is I move one. See the points moving to. Three. You won't obviously see the shape. Four, five, six. The, it's the point has moved six across, and two down. And then what you could do is effectively draw the shape in relation to that spot. So what that sort of means is I've I've picked that spot to move, and I've moved it one, two, three, four, five, six across because it told me to here. And then the next instruction is to move down to one, two down. And then all I've done is said, well, that this spot is that spot, and then just draw the rectangle on from the spot. So it's three, one down, three up, and one down. Now I've already got it there, but let me just change the colour. So it'll be three, one down, three across and up. And you've got that mirror image, if you like. In fact, I don't want to say the word mirror, because that has bearing in other things, but I've got that image. I've translated the rectangle from one position to the other. Great. OK, let's move on to the next example. OK, so here's the quest, uh, next question. Just to bring something in, just as a reminder, I'm just adding a few bits here to the scale that they've already got on, just to reinforce the fact that... Well, I didn't want to do that at all. I didn't want to do that. To reinforce the fact that that's the x-axis, and this is the y-axis and when we're talking about this brackets thing the top number is what I do on the x-scale and the bottom bit of the bracket is what I do on the y-scale and you can sort of see that they've actually got written here see how the negative numbers on the x-scale here go in that direction so that would mean that I would translate the shape to the left they've got positive numbers increasing so I translate it right, and with the Y, just get rid of those two shapes, 
with the y numbers increasing in that direction and decreasing in that direction. Okay, so we've done all of that, so let's now look at this question and how are we going to approach this? What would be the first thing we would do to the show? Point. Okay, so which point would you like? Uh, top one. Okay, so I'm just going to make a point here. And that is the point that I'm going to move. And once I've done the moving and found where, if you like, that anchor point is, mm. I can redraw the triangle when I get there. So what do the instructions tell me to do? Plus one. Plus one. So, Go up one. Yep, so we're going to do this bit first, plus one. And it's on the x-axis. Remember, I'll draw it out again. There's the x and there's the y. So we're going to go plus one across. So we go to there. And then what do we do when we get there? Uh... So in that number there, plus 5, how does that relate to this? Which does that? So it's the y-axis, isn't it? Mm. So plus 5 would be, and we said earlier, that the y-axis is moving in that direction. Move up 5. Up 5, then. okay. One, if I can just clear that, just so we've got some room to go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five, and that's where we put our anchor point now what that means then is and again by hopefully the power of I know you said grayskull then but that wouldn't work really wouldn't mm. it let me now if you like animate that so we go one across and then one two three four five up now you've moved the point but if you like once I've got the point up that up there that's when I do this redrawing thing going on here. And that's the translation. In fact, it even says, and then label the new triangle B. So I just put a B in there. And that is that. OK, so here is the second question. Um, look, I'm sorry, that it's the first question, which is, the, is more of a higher question. This is a standard question that you'll see. And it will have some um, information and it will tell us a little bit more about um, where we need to be. So let's just look at the question first. We've got two vectors highlighted, um, OA, uh, which is O to A, and we've got OB, which is O to B. OK, so let's find out precisely what the question is. Well, what we want is to find A to B in terms of basically the other two vectors that's what we're after okay so here we go let's do some do some magic so bearing in mind that the a to b is almost like as the crow flies so we're not going to use that we need to use the the roads if you want what would the direction on the roads be so the first thing is um, what we want it to do what the question is asking is to go from a to b so what would a to b equal It would be firstly going from here to... Well, big's there. Yeah, but we, that's, that's as the crow flies, so I we're not going to go that way. So, But we have to go down the roads. So A well. to O. A to O, yeah. So we go from A and go to O. So that's the first part of the journey. Then when I get there, I need to add a bit more of the journey on. And that's going from... O to B. O to B. Go from O and go to B and that's what A to B is and we know some of the we know some of the numbers and we know some of the algebra we know what that is already and we can have a go at working that out so let's have a go at that so first things first if O to A if O to A is 2A which is what we've got there mm -hmm. then what is let me just put that back in of taking something out there, put B in there so what is the reverse of that which is what AO is what the AO is the reverse of OA if you like what would that be where are we going so OA or so we're going from A right. to B that's the first so thing. that would be minus 2A yep it would be minus 2A and then when we've got there we do a bit more of the journey we add a bit more journey on and we're going to go from O to B and what's that going to be? 3B yep, and it'll be 3B so what we're saying therefore is that A 
to be is the vector minus 2a plus 3b, but we tidy that up because we don't like a minus at the front. Why just not? Because it's mathematically inelegant. That is the answer <laughs> to that. And so the answer is ab equals 3b minus 2a. And so that's that example done. OK, so here is another question, again, sort of pitched up at the higher level. Um, but still, I'm hoping that you can have a go, whatever level you're at, because actually these vector questions sometimes look a bit harder than they are, but actually it's all pretty simple stuff. So let's have a look at the question. Um, we have got um, OX equals 2AB, going from O to X. That's the first thing. And then we've got... Um, o y, which is O to y, and that equals four a b, four uh, a plus three b. Okay, that's it. And uh, this is a bit of a an oddity because it says express the vector x y, and we're sort of expecting, aren't we, some sort of triangle here? But it, there's not one there, so we've almost got to make our own triangle, and it's express the vector x y. So it's going from here up to here, that's what we're doing, and in fact we can almost put an arrow on in that direction. And the other thing that I want to just note is, look at all of these letters are in here, 2a oh, plus what? b and 4a plus 3b, but it's all the conceptual thing, it doesn't matter, it's just ox and oy, that's, that's all it is, it doesn't matter at all. And for those of you who are wondering what all the, uh, the banging and crashing is in the background, that's the dog. There he is, Badger, the very stupid and old dog who's got a bone, so I apologise for that, but, but there we go. OK, let's get back to the question, where were we? It's the XY thing, and let's just, let's just think about it quite sort of calmly. Um, the other thing that we've got to do is, it's like all of these questions, although I want to go, because this is actually what the question asks, express the vector XY. OK, well, XY is the, as the crow flies bit, so I'm almost going to ignore that, and I've got to use, if you like, the existing vectors, the existing roads. How do I do that? But not to worry about all of these numbers here flashing away and causing problems. Just talk about it in terms of O's and X's or Y's and O's and that sort of thing. So what I want is I want to go from X to Y. So in terms of this notation, what does X, Y equal? X to O. It's X to O is the first one, and that's, if you like, the first part of the journey. O to Y. Absolutely. And then it's O to Y. And this is when the question starts to fall into place, because, let me just rub that out so we don't need it, they've given me some of that already. They've already given me O to Y. So the only, X, the only problem that I've got is just this whole conceptual idea of what this is, the X to O. So let's just have a look at that. And the x to o, well, I, I already know what o to x is. And in that direction, because it tells me here, it's 2a plus b. So how would I undo that? How would I reverse minus that? Minus them. Minus them, OK. So there's ways of doing this. But I'm just going to put a minus, and it's undoing 2a plus b, which is the vector O X. So it's reversing it to making it X O. It's taking it in that direction. Okay, let's just clear the diagram up, although I appear to be actually undoing that. Let's rub some of this out then. And so then I've got the final bit, which is O Y, but I've already got that. There it is over there. And that's plus 4A plus 3B. Okay, and all you need to do here now is expand that bracket, so minus affects everything inside, so it becomes minus 2a minus b plus 4a plus 3b. Okay, so let's have a tidy, and all we're going to do is we're just going to gather terms, so I'm going to gather all the a's, so I've got a minus 2a, and I've got a plus 4a, so 4 minus 2 is 2 2a. And then I've got three B's, take away a B is... 2B. 2B. And that's the answer. The only thing that you might want to do, if you're going to do a bit of showing off here, is factorise this, take the 2 out the front, and then have A 
minus b because that's the same thing and that everybody is the answer to that it's not difficult is it it's just mm -hmm. it's just using the basic knowledge that you've gained from the first video and here's a question for you why do you think why do you think this has occurred well the answer is simple it's because you can't really make it much more complicated that whole concept of this which is just writing out in words so what they do is they have to add in here a little bit of complicated algebra and that's the reason it's in there it's just to make it a little bit harder but the basic concept of vectors is exactly the same okay so here's uh, question number three I'm going to go through all of these bits and bobs for you uh, the first thing and I guess it's actually a theme with um, vector questions is don't dive in don't dive in and start doing all this stuff down here. Actually read what it's what it said. And here are some key bits of information being given to you. And the first key bit of information is that the whole shape OABC is a parallelogram. That's a really important piece of information because that's going to play out in the next part of the question. And then you've got some other information which is M is the midpoint of CB, there's M there, and N is the midpoint of AB, which is a bit of information up there. Okay, here we go. So we're good to go. Now, then they start to give us some vector stuff, and they tell us that O to A is A, and they tell us that O to C is C. Okay, all good stuff, that's fine. Now, even before I look at the next bit of the question, I, I know some stuff already. And that is that because a vector has magnitude and direction, and the scale can almost be drawn off the diagram, even though, yes, it does say it's not drawn accurately, I can make an inference. And the inference is that in any, and I'm going to badly draw a parallelogram here, everybody, if I have a parallelogram, then this side here, is exactly the same length and parallel to that side. And I can also say that lap length is exactly the same length and parallel to that length. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is that OA, and I've got it here, OA is equal to A. Well, because of what I've just said here about things being parallel and equal, that's got to mean, therefore... M is the same? Uh, not quite M, but I'll draw it in the same colour. B to C is the same, or rather C to B. Let's get the orientation right. The orientation is really, really critically important because remember, vectors have. Let me just draw in. Vectors have direction, so it's the same as A. So that that's an important. Let's just get rid of that for a second. And by the same token. The other thing that I can say is that if that vector, which is O to C, and they tell me about that there, is equal to C, then because of the properties of a parallelogram, that must mean, has to mean, therefore, that A to, to B, B, yes, is exactly the same as well as C. So if you like, for um, for a couple of bits of information here, and some knowledge of a parallelogram, I've gained two extra vectors in that whole process, and I think that's probably going to pan out as useful in the rest of the question, but let's have a look. So, find in terms of A and or C, oh, look at them teasing us here with trying to, trying to cause doubt in our minds. We have no doubt, though. We are the Math Jedi. Find in terms of A and or C the vectors MB. Okay, well, look. MB. What's MB? Well, MB is... I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to just have a little tidy up here. And I'm going to draw things uh, in carefully in colours. So we said earlier, didn't we, that that was CB. And that was exactly the same as the vector A there. OK. But we want MB. So let's, let's pick another colour. Uh, and hey, I absolutely say to you, draw a diagram, draw, have coloured pens, put it on, it makes life easier. We want M to B, and let's just put the right colour scheme on. We want M to B. We want M to 
B. That's vitally important. Let's go back to the, the information at the start, though, because I know that M is the midpoint of CB. But I already know what the vector CB is, don't I? From C to B, because it's a parallelogram, is exactly the same as A. As, yes, it is exactly the or same as A. O to A. Yes, you're on it. O to A is exactly the same. So because M is the midpoint, how far along CB is it? Halfway. It's absolutely halfway. So therefore, MB has got to be half of... Uh, CB. Yeah, of CB. And I know what CB is already, don't I? It's A. A. So it's half of it. So it's a half. Half of A. Half of A, which more neatly we'd write as A over 2. So there's the first bit done. That's here. And I'll just write it here out of the way. So I've got a bit more room to do stuff. So there's that useful knowledge of the parallelogram. Useful knowledge of... Um, vectors and useful knowledge of the midpoint. No mass required, it's just midpoint must be halfway. So the next question is, and this is when it gets a little bit more interesting, is that we're now going to go from, what colour shall I have? Purple. What that purple there? Oh, purple. Hang on, we're having a, we're having a colour argument. That purple. Mm. Okay. We've got to go from M to N. And let's label that in the same horrible purple we want to go from m to m right i'll tell you what i'm going to do to make life a little easier is i'm going to draw this little bit of triangle out mm -hmm. okay so here we go and i'll draw it in uh, yellow just to show it so i've got that'll be m to b that'll be m to n and that'll be m to n let's just label these all up so i've got b and I've got M, and I've got N. Now we already know M to B, we've just worked it out here. We know that M to B is half of A. And from our main diagram, um, we also know, let me just have a little tidy up again, although tidying up is getting a little bit hard. We knew, didn't we, we knew something about the vector um, in fact, we knew something about the vector n to b. Because if I go back to the main diagram, we said that OC here, because of the parallelogram, was exactly the same as a, a to, to b. b. Yeah, absolutely. So if you like, here's, here's a here. And we knew that that was equal to c. So if n, because there's more information in here, is the midpoint of A to B, mm -hmm. and I know that A to B is the same as O to C here, which is C, then how how much of that is half, it's half absolutely. So NB, let's change colour, don't like that colour, let's go black. So N to B from N to B equals half of O to C. And I know that O to C is C. So a bit like the uh, half of A, it's C over 2. So now I can put that up here. So now we've got one of these triangle things. And what's the question again? The question is, I want to go from... Put it in red. I want to go from M to N. I'll just label that with the arrow in the right way. So I want to go from M to N. But again, it's almost like um, that's that's the as the crow flies, so I'm not going to do that. So just clearing this down to give myself a bit of room. Let's get rid of all of that. We now ask ourselves, in the letter forms only, what we actually do to go from M to N. So the first route is... M to B. M to to, to B, B plus, plus B to N. Yes, absolutely. Plus B to N. And I already know what M to N is, don't I? It's A over 2. A over 2. And here's the thing we've got to think about. 
we want b to n, and already we know n to b. So how do I undo? Uh, b. How do I undo? Minus n. Mm -hmm. So it's, we're talking in the terms of the vector here. So oh. that was c over two. Right. So to minus c over two. Wonderful. So it's minus c over two. So if I write this out in full, I'm just going to hopefully move this little bit up. Have I moved that little bit up? Have I moved that little bit up? Yes, I have sort of, but I think I'm probably carrying with where I am. I can say that the vector m to n, m to n equals, and we've already sort of done it here, mb, m to b, plus b to n, plus b to n. But I've just worked out what that is and it's a over 2 minus c over 2 and I'm sorry I'm running out of room here but I could rewrite that as and I'll just put it over here in this box I could factorize a half out there so that would be half a minus c brilliant okay buddy thanks very much indeed for watching that um, hopefully, I think there's five examples in there. It's really easy. You want me to do more examples, it's not a bother to me, uh, but I need to have some feedback. And so therefore, if you want it, then post, um, email, get hold of me, have you want to, and I'll make some more recordings. But hopefully there are some fairly comprehensively worked through solutions with my able uh, assistant. Thank you for that. That's okay. Wonderful. Remember, you've been listening to and watching Saltash Math Tutor helping you get by with maths. Thanks very much. Bye.